just what is the American dream? I, I know, I know, it sounds like kind of a silly question, right? But what is it really? What does it mean? What does America represent? There are certain values held here in the US that we like to think sets us apart from the rest of the world. That there is this level of American exceptionalism found within our culture that makes us believe that the USA is the greatest country on earth. We sell ourselves as a pinnacle of freedom and individualism and self-efficacy. To an extent, these things are valid. Here in the US, we have an unrivaled level of freedom over our own lives and actions that aren't found anywhere else on the planet. For example, the US is the only country in the world with true freedom of speech. Other countries may have freedoms in that department, but nowhere else is it wholesale protected from the legal system like it is here. Other values, though, seem to be little more than smoke and mirrors. Fundamentally, the American dream idealizes this country as a land of opportunity and promise, and with enough time and a little elbow grease, we can do anything. However, in an era where the new generations are becoming increasingly discontent by the world that they have inherited, an inevitable feeling of disenfranchisement has begun to grow. Writing off the back of one of the worst economic downturns in this country's history, that core tenet of pulling oneself up by their bootstraps rings hollow. This national ethos that once drove Americans to the forefront of idyllic living and prosperity seems like a far-fetched fantasy in a world of growing economic inequality and corporate influence. As such is the death of the American dream. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about the actual subject of this video now. What is Kentucky Route Zero? Superficially, it is an episodic point-and-click adventure game made by indie developer Cardboard Computer. It follows a group of strangers brought together by circumstance on a journey to make one last delivery for an antique shop, and the series of strange and surreal things that they experience along the way. Well, that's all well and good, but what is it really? What does it have to say? Well, that's where the other half of the title of this video comes in. Citizen Kane. Kentucky Route Zero, much like Citizen Kane, is largely a highly critical take on individualism, capitalism, and the American dream. And when I say that Kentucky Route Zero is the Citizen Kane of video games, that comparison means everything it implies. Both are single-handedly some of the most innovative works of art in their respective medium for their time. Technical elements of both are exceedingly well developed, from physical things such as sound design and mise-en-scene to the way that characters are written and presented. Unfortunately, the game runs into a lot of the same problems as the film. Both are rather meaningfully dense to a point that they begin to feel almost inaccessible. There's a lot going on at basically all times, but much of it is buried in layers of subtext. Additionally, the plot has a tendency to meander quite a bit. Thematically, for Kentucky Route Zero, this sidetracking is incredibly important and underscores what the game is really about. For less patient players, however, these frequent departures from the main plot can become exhausting rather quickly, as evidenced by the completion achievement stats on Steam. It also probably didn't help that the episodes were released over the course of seven years, causing many early adopters to simply fall off partway through. This slow-paced plot progression isn't inherently a bad thing but it's definitely one of the things that turns off a lot of potential players. Hell, it even almost lost me a couple of times, and weird artsy slow-paced games are, like, my thing. That said, the game is still incredibly innovative. Typically in story-based games, either the player has a direct impact on the characters and plot, or they have none at all and the story is merely told to them. Kentucky Route Zero strikes a unique medium between these two archetypes that I've never seen in any other game that I've ever played, where while you do not have direct influence on where the plot ultimately goes, or even the events that get you there, you have quite a lot of influence on who these characters are and how they interact. The basic facts of who these people literally are remain the same, but things like disposition, motivation, and general characterization are left up to the player. Where Citizen Kane innovated on character development and how to get the audience to understand a protagonist, Kentucky Route Zero innovates on how the player can project themselves onto a set of characters. 
Once again, this video will contain spoilers for both Kentucky Route Zero and Citizen Kane, although I think we're a bit beyond the statute of limitations on spoilers for the latter considering that movie turns 80 this year. Kentucky Route Zero definitely isn't a game for everyone, so I can't say many of you would be missing out horribly by having it spoiled for you. Additionally, the value of this game's story isn't particularly focused on major plot events, but rather the relationships forged between the cast of characters as the narrative unfolds. That said, if you have the patience to play through it, Kentucky Route Zero is only about 10 hours long and well worth it if you are a fan of the genre and don't care about the minimal gameplay. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about capitalism and how it relates to these two pieces of media. Both Citizen Kane and Kentucky Route Zero were made coming off of some of the worst economic collapses in American history. For Citizen Kane, it was the Great Depression, largely caused by low wages, proliferation of debt, and lack of economic regulation. For Kentucky Route Zero, it was the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis, largely caused by low wages, proliferation of debt, and lack of economic regulation. Both of these pieces of media take aim at the paternalistic capitalism prominent in the United States that allowed both of these events to occur. Citizen Kane displays the idealistic life of a man who is objectively won out as part of the system. The titular Charles Foster Kane is someone who rose to the head of the economic food chain, but is ultimately consumed by the greed that allowed him to achieve that status. Sure, he made it to the top, but at what cost? He is alone, after leaving and having been left by those who were not so fortunate. In the end, he comes to terms with this, longing for a simplicity in life that he had not felt since childhood. A childhood that was taken from him by well-meaning parents who merely wanted him to succeed. Kentucky Route Zero shows us things from an alternative point of view. From those who decidedly did not win out in the capitalistic rat race. Our two main protagonists, Conway and Shannon, come from what can hardly be considered glamorous backgrounds. Conway is an aging man, struggling with alcoholism, who was never able to consistently hold a steady job in his life. Even from a young age, he was written off by his teachers as a failure. Partly as a result of this, he ended up skipping classes in favor of going to a bar. During the events of the story, he falls into debt with the Consolidated Power Company, a mega corporation with a stranglehold on the economy of the town the game takes place in. And really quick, I want to mention that I absolutely love the double meaning in the name of the power company, because it changes depending on how you emphasize the different words between Consolidated Power Company and Consolidated Power Company. Anyway. Conway cannot pay off his debt, and is inevitably consumed by it, being taken away to his metaphorical or possibly literal death depending on how you interpret things in Act 4. Shannon, much like Conway, is someone who has failed by the system. She was born to a family of immigrants and grew up in poverty. She was orphaned at a relatively young age after her parents drowned in the coal mine that they worked in. As an adult, she works as a TV repairwoman who is quickly losing her line of work as technology progresses. The old CRT TVs that she works on are being phased out by newer technology, leaving her profession to slowly die, much like the small towns in middle America the game's setting represents. Money runs short, bills pile up. Ultimately, Shannon is evicted from her home. Like Conway, Shannon never had a chance in a world like this. It's not exactly feasible to just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and climb the economic ladder when your starting point is so far down that you can't even find the first rung. And so this brings us to the death of the American dream. A place that has sold itself on the promise of opportunity, of success for anyone if they're just willing to put in the effort. A concept perverted by corporate greed, where climbing to the top means squashing those beneath, and socioeconomic mobility is an idea all but dead. Characters such as Conway and Shannon, and even the various settings of Kentucky Route Zero depict a world that is dying due to a failure to compete. There is no place in this world for them anymore. And what of Charles Foster Kane? After having succeeded in corporate America, where has he found himself? Bitter and alone. The hyper-individualism glorified by the American dream has driven him to a life of effective solitude, where the only things that mattered to him were monuments to excess and power. In this respect, Kane has a direct parallel to another character I haven't mentioned yet from Kentucky Route Zero. 
In Act 3, we meet a man named Donald, who has become obsessed with his life's work to document all of creation in the form of a machine called Xanadu, a not-so-subtle reference to the name of the mansion Kane lives in. Much like its namesake, the Xanadu machine is a deteriorating monument to control, vanity, and achievement. Donald, obsessed with his work, drove those around him away in favor of the machine. Now old and effectively alone, all save for his remaining assistants, the Xanadu machine sits idle and decaying. Components used to work on it now lay in a pile of flame and smoke as Donald watches his life's work burn up. As Kane's Xanadu mirrors his descent into isolation and old age, Donald's Xanadu does the same. But to what end? What is the point of these depictions of power? when at the top, they are all alone. As I said in the beginning of this video, Kentucky Route Zero is about a delivery, which implies it is focused on a destination. This, however, cannot be further from the truth. The game is about the journey, and the relationships forged between the cast of characters built upon shared experience. And it's about that camaraderie felt by a group of strangers who are alone, together, in a world that has passed them by. Hey.